Hi folks, Bob here from Florida Cam Courses. Thanks for joining us for uh, this month's live event. We're uh, very excited to be talking about landscaping, best practices, Florida friendly landscape, and some of the uh, mistakes or uh, problems managers and board members have in their uh, community landscaping. But first and foremost, uh, Florida friendly landscaping. Uh, you know, in the past, many people desiring to improve the sustainability of their landscape found that archaic association rules and deed restrictions prevented them from managing their yard in a responsible manner. Luckily, in 2009, the Florida legislature found that the use of Florida-friendly landscaping and other water use and pollution prevention measures to conserve or protect the state's water resources serves a compelling public interest and that the participation of homeowner associations and local governments is essential to the state's efforts in water conservation and water quality protection and restoration. We actually have a statute for that, per Chapter 373.185. A deed restriction or covenant may not prohibit or be enforced so as to prohibit any property owner from implementing Florida-friendly landscaping on his or her land or create any requirement or limitation in conflict with any provision of part two of this chapter or water shortage order or other order, a consumptive use permit or rule adopted to issue, uh, issued pursuant to part two of this chapter. And it goes on to state that a local government ordinance may not prohibit or be enforced so as to prohibit any property owner from implementing Florida friendly landscaping on his or her land. Now be mindful of the fact that this relates strictly to HOAs. The condo uh, land is owned by the condo association. Uh, Florida friendly landscape is not only beautiful, it's also environmentally friendly. It stabilizes the soil, prevents erosion, filters out pollutions, and reduces harmful runoff, all of which contribute to preserving Florida's unique natural resources and estuaries. From the fertilizers you apply, to the water you use. Your gardening choices can have an impact on land, water, and wildlife. What you do in your landscaping really does matter uh, in the big picture. So we're gonna talk about that today and we're pleased to have Mr. Jeff Gomez in our studio to discuss not only the importance of Florida-friendly landscaping, uh, but also some common mistakes and uh, decisions property managers and board members make when deciding on uh, community landscaping material. Jeff is the owner of Coast to Coast Landscaping and Pest Control. It's located here in Vero Beach, Florida, and he's very much an expert in this field, having worked in the profession for over 25 years. Welcome, Jeff. Thank you for taking the time to come and talk to us today about this uh, very popular issue in our communities. In almost all cases, the landscape sets the curb appeal of the property or the community and a lot of folks make their decisions uh, about purchasing as soon as they pull into the property. So let's start with a few questions, mostly about Florida friendly plants. Specifically, can you give our viewers some choices on uh, Florida friendly plants that have low water use or insect to intolerant or tolerant and low maintenance? Absolutely, Bob, thank you for the opportunity to come and speak with you. Um, there are many different plants out there that uh, go with different environments. Uh, we have a lot of drought tolerant plants, we have salt tolerant plants, we have uh, plants that just thrive in different varieties of soil. Um, most of your arbicolas, your iliagnuses, stuff like that that thrive on the beach do very well. Um, inland you can do your viburnums, your uh, carissas, your all different kinds of plant materials out there. Are the, um, are the viewers able to search for this information? Can they download this information? Because you're rattling off a lot of names there. So. Yes, most of the materials, uh, you can go on the internet, look it up, or you're welcome to a, go to a garden center uh, to you know take a walk through. Most of your garden center people will uh, educate you as you explain the environment that the plant material is going to go into. When I was researching for this session, I actually just Googled Florida Friendly Landscaping and a, a ton of things came up. Uh, but what I noticed is that it was related to my region. 
do the various regions in the state of Florida play a role in the landscape choices for Florida friendly or any other, anything else? It does, Bob, because different, you know, Florida uh, is unique because uh, we have different regions where Jacksonville is much cooler and much colder than, you know, Vero Beach or uh, Daytona, you start to cool off a little different and Vero, it gets warmer and then Palm Beach all the way down to Miami. So each region is different. Um, depending on the environment that you're putting your plants in, um, there's different plants that will fit better in that environment. To, to the to the areas. I, I noticed that the, although we're located uh, physically in East Central Florida, our climate zone is actually subtropical. It's very subtropical. Um, noticed a couple years ago, five, six years ago, we, we got, we dipped down into the 28, 27 uh, degree bracket and you know now we're we're fixing to come into November and we're still in the 80s. So each year climates are changing. It's getting warmer and warmer and um, with that said, you know, uh, we're heating up in, in different areas of the environment. I don't want to put you on the spot necessarily, but is there a specific plant that comes to mind that just is not meant to grow in, let's use our region for instance. I, I can recall starting out where everybody wanted coconut palms and banana plants but they don't necessarily thrive here, is that correct? No, bananas will thrive, coconuts will thrive. Uh, the plant material that, that we've, we've seen over the past 20 years that has uh, just you know diminished and, 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 and we're not using anymore are your viburnum albuquis, um, your viburnum suspensums are, are some of the materials that we've, we've stopped using because uh, they're, just not, they're just not drought tolerant. Um, they need more water to keep, uh, to keep them flourishing. So we're, we're, we're leaning more towards the, uh, the arbicolas, stuff like that, which will um, not need as much water, very salt tolerant, and most of the, most of the properties on the, on the beach side use that type of material. Thank you, very interesting. Jeff, in your opinion, what are some of the mistakes that the property managers make when they're deciding on landscape choices? Um, it varies, you know, depending on the environment where you're putting the plant material, a lot of managers will um, just want something with a lot of color. Well, you can put something with a lot of color, but you have to, you know, make sure that it'll fit shade, sun, um, and and of course wetness. How much water is it going to get? Is it an area that's wet? It's dry, etc. A lot of times, there's pressure on managers from board members or people that come in uh, the the snowbirds that like to see the same type of plants that they have where they come from down here, thinking that we can grow anything here. And uh, like some hydrangeas and things like that just don't do well here. And it's important that the manager be able to not only offer an opinion, but also provide facts as to why it will not work here. Um, peonies is a good example. I, I remember when we came to Florida, my wife brought her peonies rootstock with her. <laughs> and it grew and as soon as it started to bloom it died right away because the heat was just too much. So I know I, I get asked this all the time as I'm sure you do, but what's the best turf for shady areas? Uh, in Florida we have many regions that, where there's large oak trees and provide a fair amount of shade, you know, perhaps five or six hours a day. Can grass grow there? Grass can grow there, but it's, it's, it depends on, you know, one, has the oak trees areas been pruned and, you know, maintained over the years? Two, what type of soil are you working with? Um, three, uh, is the water source good? You don't want to overwater a, a shaded area, especially with new sod being installed. Um, there are different strands of sod. There's many, many strands of sod, but, you know, we have palmetto, seville, bitter blue, they call um, to work in those shaded areas, not all the time that you need to look at the environment. We need to make sure that the trees are thinned out, the water source is good, and you have a good topsoil that'll get these get the grass to thrive. So even with, with Seville, how much sunlight does that require on average? Um, approximately four to five hours a day, between four and five hours. And if I have a place that doesn't receive that much shade, what's a good alternative ground cover? Um, jasmine minima is an, a, a very unique ground cover, does very well. Uh, your holly fern does well. Um, there's many other different varieties of 
low ground cover that you can put in to, to absorb the areas of sod that, that won't grow in those areas. I like that. I, I, a little bit of a uh, personal issue for me as a community manager, I'm often in the middle of the great mulch battle between boards and uh, residents. Board members and managers struggle with the expense of purchasing mulch only to watch the material either float away or get blown away. Um, can you tell our viewers why mulch is important? What's a good choice for long lasting mulch? And uh, maybe what type of mulch products are trending now in your sure. field? Well, Bob, there's so many varieties of mulch out there. Uh, we as a landscaper choose to use 100% cypress mulch. It has a beautiful color. It's 100% cypress. It costs a little extra to, to get. Um, sometimes it's very, uh, it's hard to get the mulch because it is cypress. Um, there's reds, golds, browns, blacks, all different colors of variety of mulches out there. Um, I recommend the cypress because they're environmentally friendly around the, um, around units of homes, uh, condos, uh, etc. It seems to hold very well, bug, re bug resistant to, to a certain medium. Um, uh, it just, it's, mulch is a, um, how do I want to put it? It's a, um, it's like putting icing on a cake. It's a cosmetic look that you put down, makes it, we do it in the winter months, makes the property look good, and um, just, it, it does very well. Wow, I didn't know there was so much to talk about for, <laughs> for mulch. Uh, we're getting close to uh, being out of time. We know all of our viewers have a lot of other things to do today, but Jeff, in closing, uh, what other information would you like our viewers to know? How can they reach you if they'd like more information on some of the things we talked about or your services? Sure, Bob. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to come speak with you today. Um, please, uh, if you, any questions or if anyone ever wants to stop by, we're located on uh, 1300 Oslo Road in Vero Beach, Florida. Um, we have a full garden center there we, uh, and a growth facility. You're welcome to come out um, and take a tour of the facility. And any questions that you have, we'll be glad to answer for you and, and show you all the plant material that we have. Once again, thank you very much okay. for coming and taking time. I know this is a very busy time of year for you. Uh, everything is growing like crazy. And uh, just before we wrap up, you know, we had a crazy summer. Unbelievable. What did all that water do to you? Um, it slowed us down tremendously. Uh, we had, you know, a good amount of rain for... Uh, X amount of days, many days, and then it just stopped. So that accelerated with heat, everything grew very heavy, and uh, just kept our maintenance crews working around the clock to keep up with weeds, especially the weeds, trimming, uh, and just overall maintenance of the properties. So, you know, managers, board members, the, the plants are gonna grow uh, regardless, the more water they get, the, the faster they grow. Sometimes it's just not prudent to brick send the landscaper in there because it could cause more damage than harm with ruts and uh, getting materials uh, st stuck. So I always trust my landscapers when they say it's just not the right time to cut the grass or go in there and do things. Uh, we're going to get it. You know, it's kind of like uh, cutbacks. People get very upset when you do the cutbacks right. and when you explain that it will grow back. Right. It does grow back. So. We want to thank you for spending this time with us today. We'll see you next month, and we'll be talking about something else great, I'm sure. Jeff, thank you once You're again. Get on out there and cut some grass. Yes, sir. Thank you.